Hello everyone. In the last lecture, we learned we talked about IP addresses and, and subnets. In this lecture, we are going to talk about how to obtain an IP address. So an IP address can be hard-coded uh, into <clears throat> hard-coded by the system admin in a file. For example, you could hard-code your IP address in Windows, Unix, Mac. In Windows, all that you have to do is go to the control panel, the network configuration, go to TCP IP and set properties where you can actually give your IP address. But most of you would have noticed that you have never done anything like this. You've just opened your laptop and you've been able to seamlessly connect to the network. That's because of a protocol called DHCP, which is Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. It helps <coughs> hosts obtain our IP addresses dynamically from the server. So it's kind of a plug and play protocol. So let's <coughs> look into the details about DHCP. Okay, so the goal of DHCP is to uh, provide host IP addresses from the network server whenever the host joins the network. And uh, if <coughs> it can renew, uh, DHCP also helps hosts to renew their IP addresses. What, it's a, what it supports, it supports mobile users because if whenever mobile users who want to join the network, they need an IP address only for a short duration of time and helps DHCP would help uh, give an IP address to these hosts and once the hosts uh, leave the network this IP address can be used for some other uh, some other host which then ends, enters the network. So how does DHCP work? The first the host broadcasts a DHCP discover message. This is this is basically the host that's entering the network it's sending out a DHCP discover message basically trying to find out where the DHCP server is or if there is a DHCP server. The DHCP server then responds with the DHCP offer message then the host sends a request an IP address from the DHCP server and the message is a DHCP request and then the DHCP server sends a DHCP acknowledgement message with the, and basically it sends an address to the uh, to the host. Okay, so let's uh, look at it via an example. So here is a client which is entering this network uh, and here is a DHCP server. So <clears throat> as you can see there are three particular subnets in this uh, in this network. And the client is entering this particular subnet out here, which is 223.1.2.0/24. Okay, so once the client enters the network, what the client does is it sends a DHCP discover message. Basically, the DHCP discover message is a broadcast message, and it asks is if a DHCP server is out there. So it sends a broadcast message, and because the client is just entering the network, it does not have an IP address you can see that the source IP address is 0.0.0.0. The destination of this address is 255.255.255.255, which is basically all ones. That is how a broadcast message is sent. Because the client does not currently know what the IP address is of the DHCP server. So it sends a broadcast message. And the ports that are used for DHCP by DHCP for communication are 67 and 68. Okay, so once the DHCP discover message is sent to the server, the server responds with a DHCP offer message. Basically, that is also a broadcast message and, say, <coughs> and it says to the client that I am this DHCP server and here is an IP address that the client could use. So why does the server need to send a broadcast message? The reason is the client currently does not have an IP address. So the only way that the server could reach this particular client is if it sent a broadcast message for <coughs> all the hosts in the net, which all the hosts in the network could, could receive. So it sends this broadcast message. So basically, as you can see here, the source address is a source address of this DHCP server, which is 223.1.2.5. And the destination is again all once. And what it, this YIAD address basically is 223.1.2.4. Basically what this DHCP server is saying that this client could potentially use this IP address if it <coughs> wants to. Then the client just says, sends another broadcast message saying that <coughs> it would accept the, 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 this, this IP address. And then the DHCP <coughs> server basically sends an acknowledgement back saying that it has the <clears throat> acknowledging that the client could take the IP address and it just makes a note of the fact that one client in the network has this IP address which is 223.1.2.4 which makes sure that it does not provide the same IP address to another client which arrives into the network in future. Okay, so let's <coughs> now go into a <coughs> little more, more detail. DHCP, the primary job of DHCP is to provide IP addresses but 
that's not the only thing that our DHCP does. DHCP could provide the address of the first hop router for a client. It can also provide the name and address of the DHCP server. From further, it also provides a net, uh, the network mask, basically the, the subnet mask of the, the subnet portion of the, of the network. Okay, so how does DHCP work? So if we looked at the discover and uh, the discover, the offer, the request and the response messages, but what protocol does DHCP use? So basically, when our client arrives in this network, what it does is it wants to send a DHCP message. So it want, basically wants to obtain a IP address. So it will use DHCP. So it sends this DHCP request. This DHCP request is sent using UDP. So it's sent using UDP and it travels on the, all the way down through this protocol stack. And then it's sent onto this network where this <coughs> server, the DHCP server actually receives it, you can make sure, you can understand that because uh, the destination is all set to uh, to one, because otherwise, or FFFFF, here on the LAN, that's just the, just the broadcast message, how a broadcast message pro propagates in Ethernet, and then the uh, DHCP server is going to receive this message. Then what's going to happen is the DHCP server message is going to travel up the protocol stack at the server, and basically it's going to get demultiplexed, and then the D <coughs> and then the DHCP server is basically going to send an acknowledgement back to the to the client where it's once again going to travel up the protocol stack. After all this, the client is basically going to have an, an IP address, or it's it can also have the name of the first hopper router and the name of this DHCP server. So these are this and these are the things that the client can obtain uh, using DHCP from the server. Okay. So as I said, can know its IP address and also know the IP address of its first hop. Okay. So we in in your labs, you'll be doing a DHCP lab, and this is how. And if you use Wireshark, this is how a DHCP request message is going to look like, and this is how a DHCP response uh, reply message is going to look like. So I just wanted to give you a high-level overview of how it looks like, and you'll be do working out the Wireshark labs by yourself. Okay, so far we looked at how an um, an individual host can obtain an IP address. The next question is, how does a network obtain an IP address? The DHCP server can hand out IP addresses to the different clients, but then the question is, how does the DHCP server know which addresses to hand out? Basically, it should know, the DHCP server has to know the subnet part of the IP address, right? So the, que the answer to this question is, a network obtains its IP address from the ISP. So the ISP has <coughs> a bunch of IP addresses that can yeah, that can hand out and hands it out to the different organizations. For example, here, this ISP's block of IP address is 200.23.16.0 slash 20. So the first 20 bits are the subnet, the remaining bits could be the host. It just divides the block of IP addresses it has to the different organizations which request IP addresses from it. <clears throat> For example, to the organization 0, it gives 200.23.16.0 slash 23. To organization 1, it gives 200.23.18.0 backslash 23, and so on. This is how organizations obtain their IP addresses from the ISP. <clears throat> of course, you will now be thinking that how can an ISP obtain the IP address? So this is basically the, <clears throat> the last word we are going to talk about, IP addressing. Basically, an ISP can get an <clears throat> its IP address from the ICANN. Basically, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, it's an organization which allocates IP addresses and an ISP can actually uh, obtain IP addresses by going and re requesting IP addresses from the ICANN. With that, uh, um, I'll wrap up our discussion on IP addresses. Thank you all.